My name is Carson. Welcome to Thrifty Garage, a channel where we do everyday repairs, how-tos, and reviews. Recently, we did a video where we did a broad overview of these Hunter products. Today's video, we'll be taking a look specifically at this Hunter Bluetooth Node Controller, so stay tuned. Okay, let's open this up and take a look at this Node uh, Bluetooth. We've got our starter guide. Actually comes with a valve. That's interesting. DC latching solenoid. So I wonder if you have to have this solenoid for it to work. It's already hooked up. So I did not realize that that's what it came with. So what is this? So you can mount that like on the box. Ooh, I like that. A lot of times these get underwater. Um, Lots of issues. So usually you can put them on. Or you can put it on the solenoid. Yeah. So in, inside your valve box, you can set this on top of the solenoid. It'll sit like that, and just keep keep it out of the, the elements. Keep it out of the water. Um, but you can also mount this little dilio. I, you know, I'd say on the side of the valve box inside, you know, stick it on the side of the valve box, put this little clip on there, you can put it right there, it give you some access from the outside. Yeah, cool. Again, I have not done much research on these um, at all. I'm just use the standard node, nothing with the Bluetooth, so some cool little features here. What's our press and hold? Okay. So no batteries in here, so we will need to put some looks like some uh, 9 volt batteries, maybe. We'll do some instruction reading. Input 9 volt DC. So I don't know if you saw that, but that does have um, two O-rings to keep uh, water and the elements out. So what do we got coming in here? We've got click and soil sensors. We've got zone one and common one. So this is the one station controller. So on the front here, we've got the battery check LED. Now the bigger models will have buttons in the middle or, or indicator lights in the middle. Um, so two through five active station indicator LEDs, and then we've got the stop sign is the manual stop hold button to stop active station. The play button is manual station start hold button to select station indicated by the station LED. Press button to activate hold button to select the station, and then this one is the battery check button. So accessing and replacing the battery. So as we assumed, we've got two 9-volt batteries in there. Test the power node by pressing the battery check button on the front of the controller. Observe the check for the illuminated green light. If the LED is red, the battery needs to be replaced. So press here, and we've got our battery LED up there. Uh, connecting DC latching solenoids. So as I assumed, um, we can only use DC latching solenoids. Um, it looks like they operate at a different voltage. Uh, 24 volt AC solenoids will not operate. There's also a, a wiring maximum distance of 100 feet. So one thing that's great about this setup right here is if I've got an existing valve that I wanted to come in and install this on, uh, whether it was a disconnected wire or whatever the conditions were, I could easily unscrew this um, solenoid and take this unit with this connected solenoid. I don't even have to wire or splice it or anything. Just take this, screw it into the valve that I want to control, and it's ready to go. So really nice and easy setup there. Um, I'm curious how like the four station controllers work um, with this. If they if it comes with all connected um, DC latching solenoids or if you need to um, do those differently. So this yellow wire here just comes straight out, goes up here, loops around, and goes back in. This is the Hunter Mini Click, Freeze Click, or Wired Rain Click Sensor. Um, and the purpose of the sensor is to stop watering when the weather conditions dictate. Cut the yellow wire, loop, attach the 
node of Bluetooth at approximately the middle of the loop. Remove approximately half an inch of insulation from the wire. Attach one yellow wire to each of the wires of the weather sensor. You mount the sensor up to 100 feet from the node um, using the 18 gauge uh, wiring size as a minimum. And then secure all wiring connections with waterproof connectors. So to install a rain sensor, uh, you just hook it up to that yellow wire. Pretty, pretty simple and easy. If you're looking to do a soil moisture sensor, um, you can connect the probe uh, to the gray wires. Same method, you cut it, um, splice on the probe to the gray wire, and you're good to go. Obviously using um, the same uh, silicone wire nuts. And here's that controller mount. Like we talked about, you can mount it to the valve, or you can mount it to this little uh, knob tray that they've shown here. Uh, again, that's really pretty cool. Mounting alternatives, you can attach it to PVC pipe, walls, or valve boxes. Okay, now we get into the app programming. Um, so this is the Hunter uh, Bluetooth app, um, and it's the same app that uses the um, Hunter uh, Bluetooth app timer, which um, pretty ingenious if you ask me to connect this. These were really, really hard to program. You don't really have a display here. Um, I guess that the other ones do have a, a small screen display, but they are not uh, very intuitive, you know, when you're having very minimal buttons. It's really hard uh, to program these. Um, so the fact that this is Bluetooth, a technician can, can get within range, be right here next to it with the phone app, and connect to it, and then program on the phone, and so that really gives you unlimited button options, uh, different settings and whatnot, so that's uh, pretty cool. I'm not going to install this right now, but we will definitely install this on a future job and uh, give this some more testing and, and more uh, user experience with how this goes. But if it goes anything like other uh, Hunter nodes that I've worked with, uh, it's a great solution for problems that uh, really isn't a viable option uh, otherwise. And, you know, whether it's a sleeve under a driveway that's missing um, and it just doesn't make sense to run new wires all the way around a building or house, um, the node is an excellent option for that. Um, you do have to be careful when you're using these nodes. If you've got a separate controller on site, uh, you don't want to be watering at the same time. Um, the reason of installing zones on a sprinkler system is to uh, give the correct amount of water pressure, the maximum water pr pressure uh, usage for each zone. So if you've got two zones, then you're really doubling up on that water pressure and you're really using more water, probably than what the system's intended to run, and you're not going to have a good performance because of that. So whenever you do install two controllers on a job site that has a single uh, water source, you definitely want to make sure that there's no overlap in the watering. Uh, but those are my quick thoughts and tips on this uh, Hunter node. Um, if it uh, seems like it'll fit uh, your problem, be a good solution for you, then check it out. Well, thanks for watching this review on this Hunter node Bluetooth timer. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it was useful and informative. If you did, please uh, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Recently, we, were, recently we did a video on these Hunter products. We did a broad overview video. Recently did a video on these Hunter products. Today's video will be taking a look at the Hunter node spe specifically. Today's video will be taking a Today's video will be taking a more in-depth look at the Hunter